No, I think recovery is key. We always hear about sleep. You grow when you sleep and incidentally your brain, you stimulate learning when you're awake, obviously, but the reordering of neural connections happens in sleep. This is why sleep is the way to get smarter, provided you're also doing the learning part. <laughs> sleep is the way to get stronger, provided you're also doing the training part. You've had some really, you've put out interesting content over the years in terms of um, even sleep position. Uh, one of the major changes that I made to my sleep behavior is to not have the sheets tucked in at the end of the yeah, bed. Right, right. And I'll tell you, this had a profound impact on several things. First of all, my feet have always been the bane of my existence. Broke them a bunch skateboarding. They, I'd, And I noticed when I'd run, I'd get shin splints. And, and then I started to notice that my feet sort of... Um, uh, you're the PT. They were kind of floppy, and the mm -hmm. you know, as if I was pointing my toes slightly all the time at rest. If I was, um, and I realized that based on listening to you previously, that my sheets were wrapped tight, not hotel tight. Right, right. right. I don't know what they're thinking in the hotels. <laughs> Can't get your feet in. And I started um, releasing the the sheets at the end of the bed. Yeah. And I also started doing some tibialis work. Yeah. Um, front of shins work essentially changed everything. My back pain from running, my shin splints disappeared, my posture improved, although I, my audience will tell me that it still needs improvement. There are always five or 10 people that want- sit up straight. I've actually had chairs sent to our mailing address. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice chairs. So I'm trying, my, I'm trying there. Um, but this is fascinating, right? Um, the position that one sleeps in. Um, I fortunately have never had any shoulder issues, knock on wood, but maybe you could just talk, talk to us a little bit about sleep and sleep position for sake of waking position and movement. Because this, I think, is a very unique and very powerful way to think about sleep. This podcast has done a lot of episodes about keeping the room cool, getting sunlight in your eyes, et cetera, how to get into sleep. Mm. But you've talked about physically what positions might be better to sleep in. So uh, please, please uh, enrich us. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, you know, some people's opinions of of that type of content is that you you know you sleep in the the position that's most comfortable so you ensure that you're sleeping. Oh, great! I I understand that we all want to sleep. That's the goal when we put our head on the pillow is to actually fall asleep and wake up in the morning and not know what the hell happened unless you had a dream. But you know, beyond that, there are certainly physical components to sleep that that is why a lot of times people will wake up and say like that, that you can incur pretty serious injuries in sleep people will wake up and have like a shoulder that did not bother them at all be humming the next day or even for weeks after because of the one sleep position they put themselves in in a prolonged way and they happen to have a deep sleep even through the discomfort um that can do actually some 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 damage so it's understandable that the body can incur some strain and stress if you're sleeping in the wrong way. One of the things I say right off the, the bat is sleeping on your stomach just doesn't really have many benefits. You know, you're you're putting yourself into a position that is depending upon the 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 orientation of your your mattress or how many pillows you're using, but you're basically putting yourselves into a excessive extension of the lumbar spine, which for most people isn't very good. If you're if you're a disc patient, um, I guess that might be helpful, you know, for, for relocating the disc. But I mean, for the most part, um, your hands are then usually not at your sides, but they're up under your arms. So you've got them into sort of internal rotation up over elevation in your head. It's just not a great position. You also have to crank your neck from one side or the other in order to breathe, or you're going to be your face down straight into the pillow. So I would skip that one. And there's some people that are total belly sleepers. And I, and I would just say, listen, I don't think that is the, the most a healthful long-term way for you to sleep. Try to adopt a different position. Um, sleeping on your side oftentimes is is also brought along with that, the legs and knees coming up towards the chest, prolonged hip flexion. Listen, we're doing enough of that during the day. We yes, don't need what to we're do, doing right now. Right, right. We yeah. don't need to do another 10 hours right. or eight hours or something right. at night like that, you know, and it just is reinforcing, you know, and as we said too, you know, let's say you trained that day, you're just reinforcing muscle shortening overnight, you know, where, where the body is healing and trying to create some, you know, changes in your body. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons why I recommend stretching or static stretching prior to going to bed, a lot of people don't really want to do it at that point, because it could take 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, depending upon how many muscles you have to stretch. But, you know, it's good to sort of try to establish this longer length temporarily prior to going into a state where you're going to be not moving and recovering and, and, and creating new uh, changes in the muscle. So, um, you know, that kind of, I don't say it doesn't rule out the, the side sleeper. The side sleeper could be very, very helpful for somebody that has apnea or, you know, uh, other, other conditions. So again, it's not a, an all or nothing approach, but it just, it's something that you need to pay attention to. Um, 
when you are on your back, like you were talking about, and your feet are wedged underneath a tight sheets at the end of the bed. And most of us, unless we consciously are pulling them up, don't prefer our beds to have really loose sheets at the end of the bed. It's harder to make the bed in the morning. Right. So it's like you, you, you're going to want to have, you know, them tight. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying as you experienced, you know, you're going to have <clears throat> these, these, uh, you know, pr prolonged plantar flexion that's going to likely lead to shorter, you know, calves over time. Um, because you're lacking all that length for that long period of time that you could have if you just loosened up the sheets and allowed your feet to just, you know, hang out where they are. Now, the resting position of the ankle <clears throat> is not in dorsiflexion. It's going to be still in some plantar flexion, but not being driven down and pulled down into that position. Um, and I think what happens actually is people who get uncomfortable that way, even in their sleep, will shift away from that by turning either onto their side or their stomach. So, there's definitely an impact of the body position and sleep and figuring out the best way that you can still sleep, of course, and get your rest, but have a mindful eye towards what it's doing to your body and choose the one that's least, uh, you know, abrasive to your body is the way you should go. That's terrific. And again, it's really helped me. And um, uh, I'm a big believer based on good science out of Stanford and elsewhere um, that, you know, as much as we can be nasal breathers in sleep, we probably should be. I don't know if you've done any content um, yet about have, you know, taping yeah. the mouth shut with some medical yeah. tape, but you know the, the the benefits of nasal breathing in sleep are pretty tremendous. But it takes a little bit of training yeah. for people to do, and the training is very simple. It's a little little piece of medical tape. So um, again, a topic for another time. And last but certainly not least, thank you for your interest in science.